I'm Max Nyark, and today I'll be talking to you about how we built a healthy on-call experience at Chronosphere. But first, I'd love to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm an engineering manager on the platform team at Chronosphere, where I've been since January 2022. Prior to this, I was at Palantir for five and a half years, where I led the observability team. This is actually where I was introduced to Chronosphere for the first time. In my free time, I enjoy running and biking, along with a mix of other outdoors activities. I've broken down our conversation today into a few main themes. First, I'd like to tell you about engineering a Chronosphere to contextualize the rest of what we're talking about. Then, I've highlighted three foundational principles that we've found invaluable to ensuring team health at Chronosphere. I'll share some anecdotes about what has worked for us, but it's important to keep in mind that there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Instead, I hope you can draw inspiration from these to define your own culture and share your lessons learned with the rest of us. Chronosphere was born out of a gap identified in the technical landscape by our co-founders Martin Mao and Rob Skillington while they were on the observability team at Uber. At Uber, they built M3 to address the need for a time series database capable of handling the metrics volume of a containerized microservice-based system architecture. Recognizing the broader opportunity in the market, they went on to found Chronosphere in May of 2019. In the three years since, we've grown to 160 employees worldwide and are trusted as the observability solution by industry leaders such as Zillow, Visa, DoorDash, Robinhood, and Square. We're a remote-first company with hubs in New York, Seattle, and Vilnius. Our engineering organization is globally distributed with over 68 individuals contributing to our product and infrastructure. We've managed to accomplish all of this while growing at a breakneck pace, more than doubling the size of our engineering team in the past six months. As the engineers who are building some of the core components leveraged while on call, we're intimately familiar with the impact that tooling and process can have in the overall experience. The rate at which we've scaled the organization in a remote first environment has forced us to continuously refine our process to avoid burnout and ensure we can continue growing our business. We've managed to maintain best in class SLAs with a perfect track record by focusing on building out a healthy on-call experience. We've gone from a small co-working space in New York City to over 160 individuals across the world. The first pillar that I'd like to dive into is the culture, which is an essential part of team health. The on-call experience can be a stressful one, particularly for engineers who are going on their first rotation. There are two key things that Chronosphere does which I've found highly effective at addressing it. The first is the on-call Slack channel, where engineers across teams proactively help each other resolve issues. We integrate our pager duty with Slack so that when a monitor fires, it posts a message in this channel. Engineers dive into the thread to help out with debugging the issue and can bring the conversation onto a video call if the asynchronous communication isn't cutting it. This reduces the timeline to resolution, and more importantly, it sets an example that engineering is a collaborative process. It's not just one person's problem to solve, but a community effort. The second process that we've found highly effective at Chronosphere is our weekly postmortem review, which is an engineering-wide deep dive into any significant outages or issues encountered in the past week. We review the timeline of events and then engage in a blameless five whys style breakdown of what went wrong and how to avoid not just the acute issue, but the broader class of problem moving forward. Similar to how on-call shouldn't be an island, we want to ensure that the after-the-fact work isn't one either. Issues aren't due to any individual failure, and by all investing in solving the problem, we're ensuring that we aren't accruing painful tech debt that adversely impacts our team health. We decided early on our journey as a company to transition to a remote-first model. Culture is a living, breathing organism that evolves over time as a function of its environment. Establishing and maintaining culture in a remote-first environment is far more challenging than one where you have organic face-to-face -face interactions throughout the day. The only way to ingrain culture consistent is through consistent reinforcement at every level of the company, starting from the top. One of Chronosphere's core values is fostering a community where individuals feel empowered to set the culture. This pattern of organization-wide engagement extends beyond the on-call experience. Creating mechanisms to share knowledge across the organization gives people the context that they need to solve problems more effectively. 
we have a high degree of transparency across the board, which manifests through things like company and engineering wide all hands, design documents shared broadly, and regular use of low fric friction synchronous communication tools such as Zoom. All of these contribute to our velocity of engineering and product quality. None of this is possible without the people. Social connectivity in a remote environment is something that requires continual, active investment to maintain. There are a few things that Chronosphere does to promote a sense of connectivity and community. In a couple of weeks, we're going on a company-wide trip to Puerto Rico. It'll be amazing seeing the nearly 200 people together since it's easy to lose track of the scale when people are dialing into a Zoom meeting. In this vein, the teams that I work with are geographically distributed, and we try to co-locate somewhere for a week once a quarter to bring everyone together. We hang out together in virtual game nights and unplug and unwind with company-wide summer Fridays. By having these socialization opportunities, both within and beyond the business context, we're able to build trust with one another. This allows us to have constructive conversations in otherwise stressful situations, such as when debugging an outage, since we know that everybody has positive intent. We're building a community where people invest in each other beyond the scope of their immediate goals. One of my personal favorites in this vein is our kudos system, where anybody can give public kudos to recognize somebody going above and beyond. It doesn't hurt this comes with a $15 gift card. As with before, this connective tissue builds trust and camaraderie across the organization. Little things like this can go a long way in ensuring that when people need to bunker down in the trenches during a stressful issue, everyone knows that they have each other's back. Finally, I wanna talk about experimentation. The environment that we're operating in isn't static. Things that worked for us when we were a 50-person company might not work when we're a 150-person company, while the world is rapidly changing around us. We want to create mechanisms to handle these changes in stride, and the best way to do that is by open sourcing the problem to the community. Figuring out how to empower the team around you to drive change is the most powerful thing you can do. Problems get solved better when we can solve them together. Lead by example to get the flywheel started so that the momentum carries on even if you take your foot off the gas. One example of how we accomplish this is with a bi-weekly on-call retro on the platform team. In this retro, we dive into the process side of things and come out with action items to iteratively improve what we've implemented. A recent thing to come out of this was better on-call runbooks for people who are ramping up on support to have a resource to fall back on rather than relying on tribal knowledge. Ensuring this feedback loop exists helps us adapt our process as the organization scales up in size. And as with before, making it everybody's problem ensures that nobody is left behind. In many cases, the cost of making a mistake is negligible as long as you can catch it and course correct in time. Don't be afraid to try things and fail. Reduce the scope of the problem to something small and palatable, leverage those around you to come up with a solution, Test it, and if it doesn't work, iterate on it. At the end of the day, it's impossible to create a one-size-fits-all solution for every organization. Identify some principles and playbooks that work for you, but don't be afraid to adjust them over time. I've found that my mistakes are what I learn from best. Investing in people pays off. By fostering a culture of trust and collaboration, we've managed to build a community of individuals who are deeply invested in the success of each other and the business as a whole. If you liked what you saw here, we're hiring. Go to chronosphere.io slash careers to learn more. Thank you for your time. Follow Chronosphere on Twitter and LinkedIn, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on building a healthy on-call experience.